Okay, thank you. So let's get started now officially. Good morning, everyone. It's our pleasure to meet many of you here on this beautiful Sunday morning at Betiso webinar number 19. Thank you very much for your presence with us today. I'm Thị Nguyễn from Hạ Long University. I am a member of Betiso K-12 College team this year. And it's my great honor to be the host in the webinar today. Let me take this opportunity to introduce to you our two beautiful moderators. Dr. Van Lee from Tengyuan University. She's the leader of k PD group this year. And another co-leader, Ms. Nguyen from Lao Cai High School number three. Now, Dr. Van Lee and Ms. Nguyen, please say hello to our participants today. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Van Lee, for introducing me. I'm uh, Dr. Hong Van Lee from Tengyuan University. I'm also the leader of k 2020. Uh, 23 this year. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming and joining me. Hello, everyone. Hello, Miss Lims. I'm Queen from Lao Thai. I'm a co leader of the Detail PD of Yatiso Association. I am very happy to be here today and have a, a nice um, webinar today. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Van Lai, please let me share the screen. Dr. Van Lai, please let me share the screen. <laughs> okay, I have enabled you to share the screen. Am I sharing the screen? Yes. Oh, okay. Dr. Lai, please. Yes, I have muted them all. And please unmute yourself when you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now please let me show you the outline of our webinar today. The first part will be introduction. It is what we are doing now. Next will be the sharing by fellow in about one hour and 15 minutes. And the last 15 minutes will be for further discussion and Q&A. And now it's my great honor to introduce to you the spotlight, the most important person who is going to make our webinar today. Our feature speaker, Mr. Frederick Bernard Lim. Mr. Lim is currently the English Language Fellow at the University of Social Sciences and Humanities, Vietnam National University, Ho Chi Minh City. He has taught English as a new language in New York City schools for so far. He began teaching is, uh, as a New York City teaching fellow in 2007. In 2016, he was a Fulbright Hay Semester Abroad teacher in Peru. He was an English language specialist in China and Vietnam in, 19, in 2019. During 2020 and 2021, he was a virtual English language fellow to Vietnam, Ministry of Public Service and Time University. In 2021, he was awarded by the New York State Teacher Association as Teacher of the Year. Thank you very much, Mr. Lim, for uh, accepting the invitation to be the featured speaker at BTSO webinar. And now the stage is over to you. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. What a great introduction. <laughs> uh, let me share my screen quickly and uh, we can get started. All right, so let me know if you have any technical difficulty there. Is everything good? Do you see everything? We are still loading. Oh, it's still loading. Oh, on my side. Yes, still loading. Well, I hope it's not going to be an issue. <laughs> I have a backup, 
So it was on a minute ago. <laughs> Could you try again? Yeah, okay. Because I saw it a minute ago. You saw it a minute ago? Okay, let me try it again. How's that? Nothing? Nothing. Something? Yet. <laughs> okay. Great job. Is that better? Very good. All right. Let yeah, any yeah. issue, maybe you can uh, send me a quick message on the chat or something. Uh, I got my phone out on the side just in case. And let me know if my sound's coming through as well. Okay. All right, thanks for the messages in the chat, all, all clear. Well, welcome everyone to this uh, Sunday morning webinar. Thanks for your attending. We're going to go over some eight methods of teaching English, sounds, and words, and sentences to help you be a better teacher. All right, uh, so I am here in Vietnam through this program called the English Language Program. And like our introductory person said, I am in Ho Chi Minh City, that's where I'm based, but I travel all around. We may, we may take a screenshot of you just to show that we've done this and you're having a good time. So be sure to smile, okay? This is our quick agenda. I know that's uh, we've cut into it so far, the warm up. I have a Google Classroom uh, connection that I want you to, to take uh, part in. Uh, I'm going to launch into why we teach pronunciation, what our phonemes introduce to you, the first three methods, take a short break, and then do the rest, and a game at the end if we have time. We have a uh, question answer also at the end if you have any questions. All right, so let's uh, see what our goal is. You'll be able to teach students how to develop clear and natural pronunciation through these eight methods, and I would appreciate if you stay in contact and let us know if these work for you in your classroom. All right, I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to get some materials. You should have a notebook, something to write with, your smartphone with a QR reader, a Gmail account. Uh, don't use your university email because sometimes it doesn't work. A small piece of paper, like a post-it. If you can see me, I have a post-it in my hand. Uh, a mirror or your Zoom camera or your phone camera, just to see your face. And a rubber band, just a simple rubber band. Okay, so that's all you need. As you get those together, we can uh, maybe play a game. Oh yeah. When you see this icon up in the upper right-hand corner, that means something's important that you should write down. Um, yeah, so you can see all these little icons there. Rubber band, you just need one. A little introduction. Uh, I know on the screen, I look like a Vietnamese person. I get that all the time, but guess what? I'm not. <laughs> uh, I grew up in Washington State. I'm from New York, actually. So you can see these two states are where I've been in the United States. If you don't know where uh, Washington is, you might have seen this building. It's called the Space Needle. And in New York, there's also an iconic building. I'm sure you know this. It's the Empire State Building. But right now, I'm in a city where you have an iconic building in Ho Chi Minh. 
Okay. Um, and a little bit more about myself. Uh, I am a middle school teacher by trade, teaching grades six, seventh, and eighth in New York City schools. You can see the picture there of my students. They come from Spanish speaking countries toward the South, Caribbean, Mexico, uh, and uh, French speaking countries like um, Mali, uh, Guinea Bissau in Africa and a handful from Yemen, so they speak Arabic. Uh, as part of my introduction, uh, I was a Fulbright Hayes in Peru, but also a distinguished award teacher Fulbright in Mexico. And I help teachers there teach better English in their classrooms. And then as mentioned, I was in Hanoi as a specialist. It was such a great time, I asked to come back in 2020, um, but you know, we shut down, so I had to wait two years to come here so that I can be with you uh, as a fellow, right? So, so far, I've been here for almost a year. I've been to all these places up and down Vietnam, got to see many of you, many of your places, but I haven't been to every place. Uh, every place I've been to, though, has been great, welcoming, and uh, I love the food, love the people. And at some point, maybe I'll come back. So there you go. All right, so let's, uh, let's hear about what you're doing. Please use your phone and uh, introduce yourself in our Google Classroom. The Google Classroom, if you haven't used it before, is a great way to interact with your students. Um, what we can do is uh, with Google Classroom is keep the conversation going. You see me on your screen for maybe another hour and 10 minutes, and um, usually we just go away. But uh, I like to keep the conversation going because I'm sure you have some questions that maybe I can answer to help you be a better teacher in the future, and I can share resources with you. So snap that QR code. You can also go to your email uh, and go to the Google Classroom and type in the code. Let me put it in the chat real quick. And you'll see in the stream, there's a prompt just to introduce yourself and give me an idea of how you uh, are teaching pronunciation. What's the biggest what's the biggest issue you might have with it? I'm going to pop out of this screen so that I'm going to ooh, can I stop sharing? Let's see. What I want you to do is just to say hi and mention the most difficult part of teaching. English pronunciation. I put a prompt there. You can just say, hi, I'm, and your name. And the most difficult part of teaching pronunciation is what? Put a timer for like two minutes or a minute and a half, let's say. Because I'd like to get to know you as well. It'll make other workshops possible if you, if many of you say, oh, I have a problem with a detail like um, final consonants or something, then we can create another, uh, another webinar for that. Let's see if I can go to the room. This is the workshop room. I can refresh and see how how many of you have have volunteered answers so far. Great, thank you. We have one there. Is the vowel sounds? Yes, I'm going to touch on that. Vowel sounds. So this is what it looks like. It'd be great if all of you joined up so I can 
give you more information. Let me put it here. Let me put in the chat the link. <laughs> That's my alarm saying that the minute's up. But yeah, so it's working. I can see one person. How about the rest of you? Just so you can chime in. Great. All right. I can see another person. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I still cannot log in because of the uh, difficult with my account. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. Well, I suggest keep the information and then maybe when the internet's more stable mm -hmm. or if you can get the account, then you can just join there. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to be using it specifically for this workshop, but I just want people to connect. And uh, the reason is, is that I've set up here resources that you can oh, download. Yes. Right? Uh, one being uh, the SpeakPipe. It's a free online way to record your voice for your students. And another very helpful app, it's called English Sounds Pronunciation. I'm going to have you download that on your phone as well so you can follow along. Uh, besides that, in the classwork section, I have these slides broken down into uh, problem areas. Consonant sounds, someone mentioned vowel sounds, so the vowel sounds would be here. You just click on that and a PowerPoint on the vowel sounds will appear and you can download it. Right, okay. Oh, that's all right. Uh, just put the, uh, the comments where you can. It's kind of tricky. In workshops, live workshops, I go around the classroom making sure everyone knows where to, to answer. Uh, but it's great to have a, a stream here. I see four people. Uh, mouth control, tongue express. Okay, we're going to cover all that. Uh, rhythm, okay, intonation, that's excellent point. Uh, shortened vowel, yep, I'm gonna cover that. Vowel sounds again. Oh yeah, articulating the THSH, good point. That will appear today. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Um, well, great. Uh, we have 20 more in the stream here. Linking intonation. Great. All of you guys hit the uh, the problem areas that I'm going to help you with. Okay. So it's all right if you're just listening. Uh, you'll get the recording later. Yeah, that's wonderful that everyone can can um, can log in. But it looks like from the responses you, that you've submitted so far, uh, you touched on the things that I'm going to be talking about anyway. So that's excellent. Are you ready for a game? Are you guys ready for a game on pronunciation? Let me see if this works for you. Let's see if this works. So I, uh, I got this game set up. I hope it's still live. So go on to quizzes. Let me see, it's this one, I believe. We can play a quick game to see how you are. <laughs> We're gonna replay this one. All right, so how about that one? Let's start a new game on quizzes. And uh, let's see how many people can join. Game code is, I'll put it in the chat, eight, two, six, four, two, zero, nine. Great, so I, the link is working. You're piling in, there's four people so far. Oh yeah. Um,
That's the game link. Amazing. You guys are great. You know how to play games. <laughs> 22 of you, 24, 25. That's amazing. Thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight. 36, 37, 38. Cool, 41 so far, 44. I don't know if there's a limit. 50, so that's like half of you so far. Should we give it another 30 seconds? Let's wait another 30 seconds for people to join up. Let me give the link again, just in case. All right, if you can't join, that's okay. It's not graded, it's just for fun. Um, I see people are still joining, so let's, let's see, another 50 seconds, 70, amazing. <laughs> this is great, I should take a picture of this, so fun. Right, another 30 seconds, and then we're going to have to play because we have a, uh, the rest of the webinar to listen to. <laughs> People are still pouring in. Okay, maybe if it hits, uh, okay, either 20 seconds or 100, then we'll play start. Ten more seconds, then we'll just have to play start. I think this is the most fun teaching. Okay, four, three, two, and one. Let's go. Let's <laughs> start. If you're still joining, go ahead and just join. Yeah, you're on your own. You just have to find the the word that does not belong there. Gosh, if I'm playing, then you're going to see my answers. <laughs> Why is it so slow? <gasps> Maybe it's just too overloaded. Okay, on my side it doesn't work, so I can't play, but you guys can just play. Oop. Are you playing? Somehow it's not connecting for me. Hmm. So go ahead and keep playing. Because I know there's like 10 questions.
Okay, it seems I'm working now. Now these are kind of hard. I'm gonna try one of these prizes. Oh no. Persuade, translate. Mm, which one is it? Mm. All right, so you got the gamut here of the different pronunciations. You guys finished before I did. That's great. Uh, congratulations to Vincent, who got 13,000 points. Amazing. You guys almost finished. So you can see if you use this in your teaching, uh, you can get the, um, the profile of the students to see like who won, but also the problems that they might have faced during the quiz. This is kind of <laughs> kind of slow. I'm sorry. Um, but it looks like most of you got it right. And you can also go back and um, go back with your students and uh, point out the mistakes and correct them. Some games also give you um, a breakdown of the, uh, the mistakes as well. All right, so if you like that game, we're going to do one at the very end. Uh, so it'll, it, this gives me a really good in indication that your levels are high. So that's great. OK, I don't know what this is doing here. OK. So we did the warm up, and now let's go into why we teach pronunciation. If you're in my workshops, actually, um, I would give you this freebie information of how to manage your class. If you have an, a, uh, especially enthusiastic class, you would say, if you can hear me, clap once, or twice, three times, teach them that signal, and uh, they quickly quiet down. We're not doing this now because we can't hear each other, <laughs> but uh, you can use it in your classroom. All right, do you agree or disagree and why? Pronunciation is often overlooked in ESL, EFL classes, the pronunciation part, right? Many teachers just repeat words that are mispronounced and ask students to say them again, and then they move on with their class. What do you think about that? Do you agree or disagree? Okay, most of you agree. Agree, agree, agree. Uh, and can someone just say why? Why do you agree? Why is pronunciation and how we look at this uh, in, in classroom? Okay, Vincent said, totally agree. Okay, but then why? <laughs> Very basic foundation. Yes, it's very it's very basic. But then this question is, 
uh, it's overlooked. Like the teachers don't focus on the pronunciation. Okay, it depends on the situation. Yep. Yeah, uh, you're all giving me really good reasons why we should use pronunciation. Um, but the question is, why is pronunciation overlooked by many teachers? Okay. All right, yes. Um, someone says people are worried because they want to sound like natives. Yeah. They don't focus. Yeah. Time is limited. Yep. Okay. Right, grammar driven. All right, you get you all gave very good reasons. It's the time, the uh, different focus on grammar. Um, maybe you don't trust your pronunciation, also. Right. I appreciate all those comments. Well, if you think about it, listening, pronunciation is great, but then listening uh, goes along with pronunciation and speaking. Listening is by far the most used skill. And there was, there was a study done by this person here, Bergorgian in 2012, uh, who concluded that uh, half of our day is spent listening more than speaking. If you think about it right now, I'm doing most of the speaking, like all of the speaking, and you're, do, you're doing most of the listening. So Every day we're listening more than speaking. So when you're teaching this, when you're teaching speaking, the point is to teach more listening. On the upper right-hand corner, you can see that the notebook twirled around. That means this is really important to know. Please make a note of that. Uh, the note is teach listening and speaking, not just speaking. Okay. Uh, and to drive the point even farther, take a look at the statistics for the demand in graduate school and in, in business. Once your students graduate, they eventually will go to a graduate school, perhaps. Well, you know, those schools emphasize the importance of oral communication and listening skills. So, yes, both listening and speaking are quite important. You can't just focus on speaking. Um, <clears throat> listening is thought to be the Cinderella skill in second language learning because everyone wants to do, oh, speaking, let's improve my speaking. But guess what? I always say that the students cannot, if they don't hear the sound or the phoneme, then the student can't really produce the word. You have to listen to it and then be able to speak it. Uh, I translated it here. And I think it's something you should write down um, because it's a, such an important point that many teachers kind of overlook. Now, if you're scared about your own pronunciation in the classroom, well, there's recorded things that you can find anywhere uh, on CDs if you have them, um, Wi-Fi if it doesn't you know if, if it doesn't work. YouTube is a great source, and also the app that I showed you in the classroom that will download. It's a great way for you to uh, improve the listening and, and the speaking at the same time. All right, so let's move on. Um, I mentioned phonemes, what are phonemes? This might be a review for some of you, brand new to some of you, but let's take a look. Uh, you can see little fish down there. We're going to use the fish as an example. As you know, English spelling does not always indicate the proper pronunciation. It's not like Spanish, right? Uh, so someone famously claimed that the word fish could be spelled G-H-O-I-T because if you think about it, if you're a learner and you see the word enough, the first word there, E-N-O-G, E-N-O-U-G-H, the G-H is pronounced like a F, right? What sound does F make? sound. And the O in the word women is pronounced like an I. Kind of confusing. So, so far we have F, I, and then the TH in motion is pronounced like a SH, right? So technically, looking at this example, thinking of your students looking at words for the first time, 
G-H-O-T-I could be pronounced like fish. This is why I always say, resort to the International Phonetic Alphabet. You can find this on, um, on the internet. This particular page came from uh, Wikipedia. It shows you how to pronounce vowels. And it shows you how to pronounce consonants, which is the next slide. For those of you who don't know, this little box here is, is key to knowing how to, to pronounce sounds with your tongue and your mouth with the IPA. Take a look at the red letters here. On the top is a tongue position, front, central, back. And then your mouth position, it's either open, mid-open, closed, mid, or closed. Look at the arrow there. Uh, it's, it's the sound e. Eh. When, when you say e, eh, where is your tongue? Well, the tip of it is in the front part of your mouth, and your mouth is midway open when you say eh. Now try the word taught, like I taught for seven years, taught. The word taught, like past tense of teach, taught. Where's your tongue in that case with a vowel ah, right? Your mouth has to be open, ah, and it's toward the back. So it's all the way in the back. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but you, you can see in the box, the um, sound ah is represented by this kind of A, and it represents the back open position of your mouth. Let's practice some of these. Uh, someone mentioned it earlier, the TH. Guess what? It's a dental fricative. This is the consonant chart. The theta symbol represents the th sound, the th. Th. And right next to it, you can see uh, another letter that re represents the th sound, like in the. If you're familiar with these symbols, then you can perfect your pronunciation by consulting that, um, that table. But also in the app, it it shows you in different um, videos and recordings how you can pronounce it. Listen to it and pronounce it better. All right, so let's move on for some practice. The TH and the TH has two sounds, right? Thick and these. Practice that by yourself, thick and these. On the right side, you can see a picture of your tongue in your mouth, you need to put your tongue in between your teeth. In a workshop, a live workshop, I would see everybody who's not wearing a mask pronounce this correctly or not correctly, because I can see the tip of your tongue. You have to stick your tongue out just a little bit and pronounce thick. Okay, thick, these. There's a difference there. These your voice vibrates. See the arrow in the lower right-hand corner? It's vibrating. We'll get into that as one of our methods, okay? That means it's voiced. All right, so let's move on for a second here. Let's practice. I know I can't really hear you, but let's practice the first one. Up, uh, upper left-hand corner. Yes, if you have any questions, please jot them down. Uh, let's repeat first, first, and then van, van. It's labial dental, so you're using your lips and your teeth. First and van. Okay, we did the the dental, the thick and these, thick, thick, these and these. And then moving down to the lower left hand, we have the alveolar the tongue and the ridge up on top of your mouth. When we say saw, saw, that's a very difficult one. And zen, zen, saw and zen. The tongue is pretty much in the same position, but the Z is voiced. You have to vibrate your throat. 
Now moving on to the she and the z sound, you have to use your tongue behind the alve alveolar ridge. She, she, and casual, casual. The S, the sh sound in Vietnamese is easy because you have that sound, but the z sound is more challenging because you don't have that sound in Vietnamese as far as I know. So she and casual. The last one in this example practice is using your throat hard, hard. You're, you're using your air in the back of your throat to produce that sound hard. All right. You can continue this practicing uh, with the app and with this chart when you get this later. It's good for your for your students to practice as well. Okay. Now I mentioned that there's a list of uh, mispronounced consonants by Vietnamese speakers of English, and here are the top five. How many of you know knew this? <laughs> The uh, TH is the hardest one, according to the study, because when you see the TH, like in think, most people pronounce it as tick, think, right? Tink. Same with mouth. It doesn't come out as mouth. It comes out as mouth. And the same with S. The sound should be S, but the mispronunciation is and I believe it's because when you write the S in Vietnamese, you need to pronounce it as sh. So there's a little bit of, of uh, confusion there. There's, a, there's a, uh, a word for that in linguistics, uh, but it doesn't come to me right now. It's like a transposition. The third is the TR. T sound comes out as a combination And, the, and when it comes down to the SH sound, it's mispronounced as a Z sound. Okay, so if, if you have especially problematic students who can't pronounce certain words, they probably have issues among these top five. So I would focus on these top five uh, because they probably know the rest. Yes, we're going to get to the app in just a second. I think it's the next slide actually. Yep, it's the next slide. Here it is. This is the app for clear English pronunciation. Uh, I found it on mine on Google Play. I have an Android. I don't know if it's on I.O., uh, but you can check to see if it's there. So I'm going to put it in the chat, the name of the app. Is English Sounds pronunciation. Okay, if I bring up anything later in this webinar, uh, you can double check it with information on that app. I think it's quite good. It's free and it has videos that you can listen to and interact with. All right, so when you're, uh, you're busy downloading that, I can move on to the next thing. which is the eight ways to teach pronunciation. In our workshop, when I say one, two, three, eyes on me, eyes come toward me. <laughs> uh, and it's a great thing to also refocus your students. One, two, three, eyes on me. We can't do it here, unfortunately, because it's so fun to do. One, two, three, eyes on me. And you can say one, two, eyes on you. All right. All right, here they are. This is the eight that I'm going to show you how to use. Voicing, linking, aspiration, syllables, mouth position, vowel length, intonation, and targeted sounds. Uh, earlier when I asked you what your problem, problem issues are, uh, I heard four of these. So this should be interesting for some of you. All right, let's do number one. Remember, we're doing one, two, three, and then take a five minute break. Uh, luckily, these go quick. So voicing is made by your throat when it vibrates. For example, the g sound. If you say g, it's voiced while the k 
is not. Even though your mouth position's the same, you have to say g and k. Let's practice that. G. K. You can you can see if your uh, voice is vibrating by putting your fingers to your throat. Just lightly press your throat and say g, g, and then k, k. You see the difference? One vibrates. The G vibrates, right? Uh, let me put it in the chat. G vibrates. It's called voiced. Right? And you can see on the right hand side, there's a list of voice consonants. The B, D, G, J, L. Practice the voiceless ones, which are ch, f, k, s, sh, all of those. Your voice doesn't vibrate, right? I can see that there's a notebook up here that up means for your primary students to learn the alphabet. Okay, let's move on. Uh, to some practice. Uh, this is just a, a practice for you. you. Let's see if you can uh, figure out the voiced and voiceless situation with the word like pat and bat, just focusing on the beginning letters, p and b, and then the f and the v in view. Uh, and number three, tear, the t and the d, Duh, su, zu. You notice that the z is voiced. You might get vibration on su. It's because of the u and the e. It's not because of the s, right? What about number five? Choke and joke. Ch, ch. That's a hard one. And then number six, a little easier, the k and the g again. And our favorite, number seven, the Think and this. Think and this. Isn't that fun? I love teaching this to um, students who first encounter English because they had no idea this mechanism works with their throat. Uh, so that might be fun activity for you in your classroom. All right, that's number one. Let's move on to number two. Uh, someone wanted to know about linking. Well, here's linking. We pronounce phrases and even whole sentences in one smooth sound instead of like broken down. Let's look at the example. Number one, the, the first sentence, there was an old man called Greg. We don't say there was an old man called Greg, right? Uh, this kind of a long sentence. In order to say this a little bit more fluent, let's go backwards and repeat. So Greg, I can hear you. <laughs> Greg, called Greg, man called Greg, old man called Greg, an old man called Greg. Look at the, uh, the red arrow with that N and the O, old man and an old man. You don't say an old man, it's an old man. Same with the S and the A, and the A. it becomes a Z sound, was an old man. Repeat, was an old man. There was an old man called Greg. Isn't that more fluent for you now? There was an old man called Greg. Let's just say the whole thing. Uh, who tried to break open an egg. Look at where the linking happens. The k -o, break open, break open. It's like said together, break open an egg. Egg. Everything's together. Break open an egg. Who tried to break open an egg? Repeat. Okay, some of you are good. And the third, he kicked it around. He kicked it around. But fell on the ground. And found that he'd broken a leg. And found that he'd broken a leg. All right, so that's kind of fun to, to show fluency if you have students who 
say word for word for word, try linking exercises and show them that uh, there's like a natural linking. Now, uh, there's a special note about the vowel. Write, on your, write down on your book, notebook, they all buy at the arcade. I'll give you 10 seconds to write, they all buy at the arcade. We write it that way, but we say with a little Y, they all buy at the arcade with a wide mouth. Okay, these are just little tricks to perfect your pronunciation. There's a rule here. When the first word ends in an A, E, or I, or these sounds, like a Y makes, your lips are wide. You insert a Y sound in there in order to be more fluent. We write pay all, but we say pay all. Can you practice that? Pay all. The end. You don't say the end. You say the end. The end. And lie on. Lie on. We lie on the beach. We lie on the bed. We lie on the couch. Right? So just practicing that makes you a little bit more fluent. Well, we have the wide mouth. What about the round mouth? This is a rounded O and U. Let's see how that works. We write the sentence, you all go out too often. Look at all the U's and the O's in that sentence. You all go out too often. <laughs> you don't say you all go out too often. You say, you all go out too often. Notice the little W in between you all go out too often. Now the rule is here when the first word ends in a O or U like U or sounds like U, your lips are round. You insert a little W in there uh, at the beginning of the next word, like you all, like a wall. You all go out too often. We write go out, but we say go out. We write too often, but we say too often, too often. All right, that's always fun, right? Write, the, write that down, we get to the third one, which is a little easier, fun, and then we can take a five minute break. This is aspiration. This is where your little piece of paper comes in. Okay, take a little piece of paper. Aspiration is when a puff of air is produced when you say a letter. So for example, hold up the paper in front of your lips and say P. All right, hey, what about t, t? It moves a little bit, not as much as a P, right? But it moves, t, k, k, also moves also moves. You can check in the classroom real quick who's saying this right or not by the movement of the paper, okay? Uh, if you don't have paper, you can use tissue, which is a, a little bit lighter, uh, but this is kind of fun. Let's practice with Peter. So your, your paper should be moving a lot. So let's practice. Peter Piper, we're going to have the P sound here. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. For visual in the background, you can see the pickled peppers in the background. If you're advanced, you can practice. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, how many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? Your paper should be. Another one, um, let's see, another popular would be Sally, you know Sally with the seashells? Does that vibrate? Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Nothing, it doesn't vibrate because there's no aspiration. How about uh, the woodchuck? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? Nothing. How much ground would a groundhog hog? Well, as much wood as a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood, right? None of those, but Peter Piper certainly makes this vibrate. 
Okay, that's always fun for learners on the uh, on the first level. Let's take a break. It's already um, a little bit after eleven, but let's take a five minute break. I need one. I'm sure you need one. Uh, so let's come back for the last last bunch, and then we'll continue. Okay. If you have any questions, put yes. it down in the chat. See you in five. Break time. Thank you. 
Okay, I hope you had a great break. I've used this video since the pandemic and it always reminds me of how I hurry up to the kitchen and grab something to eat or whatever. All right, are you ready to move on? Let's go. Okay, number four, syllables. Someone asked about this earlier. Syllables are cool because um, you, can, you can know more about the word using a syllable. Let's read. A syllable is a word or part of a word that contains a single vowel sound. It's a single unit of speech. When a word has more than one syllable, not all syllables are pronounced with the same degree of force. Let's repeat that again. If there's two syllables, you're gonna say one a little stronger, okay? So the syllable which is pronounced with greater force is called the stressed syllable. You can also hear it as an accent syllable. So accent means emphasis, right? So let's take a look at some examples here. Uh, when two syllables can be used as a noun or a verb, you stress the first syllable for nouns and the second syllable for verbs. For example, present, present, the pre is stressed, it's emphasized because it's a noun, present. But the same word, present is the verb. You might get confused if someone says, we'd like to present you with a present. That's no, right? The right word or right way to say it is, we'd like to present you with a present. Practice that. You can practice that by yourself. We'd like to present you with a present. You can practice these with your students with other longer syllables like beautiful, telephone, Florida. You, you can see the stress, right? Uh, these occurred in the in the game as well. Let's see. I have a I have a practice here. Let's just listen and repeat. Uh, and remember, you're focusing on the first part on on nouns and the second part verbs project and project 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 object 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 and then convict and convict they convict the convict and here's our present present and then suspect he was a she was a suspect he was a suspect they suspected that person. They suspected. And what about record? Plays a record, but then we record a video. Record a video. You can record a record. Contrast and contrast. Oh, sorry, Mr. Lim, could you unmute yourself? How long have I been muted? Just a minute, <laughs> just a minute. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, oh, okay. So you you heard me with all the uh, yes. all these repeating, right? I hope you repeated with me. Yes. Okay, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, these two uh, lists are great for you to contrast. Uh, let's move on to the mouth position. This is where your mirror or your uh, Zoom camera comes in because you can you can teach mouth position to your students. The descriptions of the sound and mouth position help students increase the awareness of subtle sound differences. So for example, let's go down to the TH. 
you see where the, the tip of the tongue is there? On your mirror, if you have it in front of you, you can practice the th sound, the or this. What about the, uh, on the top, the l sound? The tongue is there, but it's hidden. It doesn't come out. L, l. So you can practice the l and the th sound. Uh, in the app, you can, you can look up these sounds and they can show you in more detail how to use them. Let's do a little game here. I'm going to pronounce these and I'm going to mute when I say them and you, you put down on the chat what number I say. Let's review from zero to nine first. Port, look at my mouth, port, pit, pit, pat, pat, number three, pert, pert, number four, pet, pet, number five, pot, pot, number six, put, put, number seven, put, put, number eight, part, part, and number nine, peat, peat. Okay, I'm going to mute and say one of these. What number is that? Mm. Good guess, amazing you, good guess, but uh, okay, it is, it is five, it is pot. Good, let's try another one. Uh, Hold on, here we go. Okay, it was number nine. So lots of ones and nines. It, look, peat is different from port. Number nine is peat. Number zero is port. Peat, port. There's a big difference. Want to try one more? It's a hard one. My favorite. Good guess. I was saying putt, number six, putt. La oh, okay. Uh, some say number seven, put. You see, you see how confusing it is? <laughs> no one says putt, but maybe you don't know what putt is. If you play golf, like if you hit the ball just a little bit, that's a putt. So maybe you didn't know the word, but it was number six. How fun was that? Real fun, right? Okay, um, let's move on. Vowel length. Take out your rubber band. Take out your rubber band. This is where your rubber band comes in. Now, you know that there's long and short vowel sound, right? So bit would be normal, bit, short. But then we say... Bead, bead, elongate that, bead, bit, bead, bit, bead. Now, some words are in between. What about beat, beat, and bid, bid? You see how it's a little bit longer than bit, but not as long as bead. This is very good as a visual for your students to know that you're saying something short, bit, or longer, bead. Here's a list here. All right, you know this famous one, sheep, ship, sheep, ship. And then we have heat, hit, heat, hit. What about eat it, eat it? We wouldn't say eat it. We'd say, eat it, right? As we link those two, eat it. Um, what about seat, sit? Seat, sit. And then one of my favorite fruits, peach, pitch. Peach, pitch. Okay, just with a rubber band. It's really helpful for your students to vis visualize. All right, let's move on. How about intonation? These are the last two, intonation. Now, the intonation is how we say things. 
what word we stress and the way the voice rises and falls when we speak is the music of the language. There are two basic patterns of intonation in English. There's a falling intonation and a rising intonation. All right, so when you have a list of words like this, well, it's the same sentence, but it's in a list. I'm going to say the stressed word and it will change the meaning. So for example, Jack will cycle to the restaurant tonight. Jack will cycle to the restaurant tonight. Um, we emphasize Jack because maybe you have a couple friends, right? It's Jack who's going to cycle. The rest are coming by grab, right? What, what about number two? Jack, Jack will cycle to the restaurant tonight. He will cycle. Like maybe he was hesitant before, but then you confirm, oh, he will cycle to the restaurant. And number three, he will cycle to the restaurant tonight. He's not going to take grab. He's not going to walk. He'll cycle to the restaurant tonight. And number four, Jack will cycle to the restaurant tonight. He's going to the restaurant. That's, that's important because what if you're meeting? He's going to the restaurant. He's not coming from the restaurant, right? Uh, number five, Jack will cycle to the restaurant tonight. You're emphasizing restaurant. He's not going to school. He's not going to the opera. He's going to the restaurant tonight. And the last one, Jack will cycle to the restaurant tonight. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but tonight. So you can see that just by giving some emphasis on certain words and how you say it will give a totally different meaning. There's an example here, kind of famous. When you say, let's eat grandma, let's eat grandma. What's grandma gonna think? Oh, she's gonna be the dinner. But if you say, let's eat grandma, she's gonna say, okay, I'm coming. I can't wait to eat. Just because you paused at that grandma, let's eat grandma. So that's always fun. Uh, there's a comment. It depends on the speakers. And yes, this intention is uh, depending on the speaker's uh, meaning. That's right. So you get a lot of meaning from the, in, the intonation and emphasis they put on certain words. Very good point. And our very last one, one of my favorites, actually, this is a cool one. These are targeted sounds. You focus on sounds that your students have issues with. So depending on the first language in Vietnamese and what sounds English has that the first language does not have, remember when we, we compared the sounds of Vietnamese with sounds of English, you'll find pronunciation of certain words more challenging. Uh, what we cannot discern through listening, we cannot produce. Again, this sentence, I told you before at the beginning, what, what your students cannot listen, they can't say. Uh, so return to the diagrams of the mouth and the tongue positions to practice this one. Uh, this is like an activity that that uh, combines all of the things that we discussed. Number one through seven combines into this one. It's called minimal pairs. I'm sure you've heard about it. And also the tongue twisters, right? So let's see if we have an example of that. Yes, we do. So take a look at the drawing here of the boy on top. Identical sentences, but the phoneme changes. He's got a first. He's got a first. That, that means he's got a metal, right? But then the second sound, he's got a thirst. He's got a thirst. And that means he's really thirsty. Maybe he went running. It's a hot day. He's got a thirst. Okay. Uh, what about fin and thin? A fin soup, please. I'd never say this. A fin soup, please. But, you know, I would say a thin soup, please, maybe. If the, if the soup is thick, I'd ask for a thin soup. And hopefully I don't get a fin soup. What about uh, minimal pairs C? There's a picture of a tree. And on the other side, it's a picture of a three. How many of your students confuse these? Tree and three. It's a big tree. It's a big three. 
big difference. Three and tree. If you find that's happening, you can focus on this sound with pairs. And then the last one, tanks and thanks. The president sends his tanks. Hmm, there's a war. But if you say the president sends his thanks, then that's completely different. You're happy at that point, right? Tanks and thanks. Let's see, do we have time for like a little game? <gasps> we don't. Ooh. Maybe we can do like four of these. Want to do four? So number your, get your notebook and just number from one to four instead of one to 10. This goes real quick, don't worry. Your notebook, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four only. And uh, I'll give you an example. Bow and bowl, are they the same or different? Bow or bowl? They are different, okay? So I'm gonna show you, or I'm going to say uh, three pairs of words. And you, you say if they're different or not different. Car, 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 car. Number three, share, shared. Share, shared. And number four, team, teams. Team, teams. Okay. Well, we don't have time to do the rest of our list, but I can show you in the next slide. Good, good. You can see these are the words I said. Bow, bowl, different. Car, car, same. Share, shared, different. Yeah, most of you are getting these. I see in the chat. Team and teams. That last S is sometimes difficult. And then I would say grin, grin. Um, and you can see that this works for your class. The other words are these, gray grape, shore shorn, grab grab. That's easy, everyone knows that sound. Bow bone, my and might. That would be the list. Uh, you're gonna get this list uh, later when I share the PowerPoint. Okay, we had a quiz, another game, but we're not gonna play it because we don't have time. Uh, but I want you, to take a look at your notes. Did you write these important things as we sum everything up? The number one thing is teach both listening and speaking. Number two, students must hear the sound to speak the sound. Number three, use the IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. You can Google it. This is more like for you to know as a teacher, but slowly you can introduce a few things because it's, it's pretty complicated. You know, you have to be like a linguist uh, or someone who's studying languages to understand this. But if your pronunciation is good, your students will be better because of your pronunciation. And number four, focus on the top five sounds in Vietnamese, the TH, the, the S, the tr, the T, and the SH. Okay. Um, and download the English Sounds Pronunciation app. It has a lot more information for you to, to really narrow down on the sounds. Uh, so I hope, hopefully you got those five points and also the list of our eight methods. These are the reviews, the voicing with the throat, linking, especially with the U and the W, aspiration with the paper, syllables, the mouth position with the mirror, the vowel length with your rubber band, the intonation with the meaning, and the targeted sounds with the minimal pairs. All great techniques and methods for you to be a better teacher. <laughs> okay. Uh, so at this point, Let's just reflect to yourself, what important new word or concept did you learn today? What did you learn today as we wind down? You can put it in the chat maybe. What did you learn today? That's really important. Like one thing, maybe the voicing, maybe the linking. Uh, 
what was your favorite activity? What was your favorite activity? Was it fun? I like the games. And uh, will you try any of these to improve your speaking? Maybe with the app. The app is really cool. Um, unfortunately, I can't read any Vietnamese. All these translations you see are from Google. <laughs> yes, we'll share. OK, the same different activity. Love that, too. OK, yeah, you should you should fill out the form uh, because you don't get your certificate if you don't. Uh, we just have like a couple of minutes. I don't know if there are any questions there. Um, yes. Dr. Hong. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Lin, for your great uh, presentation. It's very inspiring, very engaging, and lots of fun. It makes teaching pronunciation not as boring as many of us, the teachers, might think. And so I hope that the participation have had lots of ideas to make their classes of teaching pronunciation more interactive more fun and more inspiring to their students. And in, uh, from the participants, please, if you have any questions, you might want to unmute yourself and ask Mr. Lim directly for now because we have only a few minutes left. If not, you can write us and message us and then we can collect all the questions and send to Mr. Lim later. We can share it with you uh, from the emails that you have sent us from your, uh, from your registration, okay? So, uh, any question from you? I do I see not. Some questions in the chat, yeah, yeah. From have... from me on my uh, from my own uh, opinion, yeah, I couldn't believe it that uh, teaching pronunciation could be so much fun. You uh, you only also provided us with not only the five tips. But for, with all the eight different ways to teach pronunciation, I don't think us teachers uh, can use all of those eight at the same time, but depending on each lesson and the way we change, the way we teach, then we can make the students uh, be more engaged and interactive with us in our teaching of pronunciation, which is very kind of um, important to teach listening and uh, speaking to our students. Any questions so far? So let me have a look at the chat to see whether they have any question. Yes, Mr. Ms. Mun Nguyen have a question. I would like to ask that and I have this webinar record, of course, as I have shared with you, we can share the recording on the website and also on YouTube. And we will also ask for permission from Mr. Lim to share with you a shortened version of uh, the PowerPoint slides that he's using for his presentation today. Of course, of course. Yes. You can have a lot of information and also the link to the app that he has shared during the presentation, which I think will be very helpful for us or the teachers of English in the EFL context. Oh, sorry, I need to interrupt you. Um, our participants, please not. Look in the, the, the second link, the second link, because the first link. Yes, so the link that I provided you, uh, yeah, the link. The link. and so uh, the host, Dr. Nguyen, has provided the access to all the participants, so please use the second link, or you might want to copy the link and do it a little bit later after the, the webinar today for getting the certifications for your attendance. Okay. We have time for one uh, question. So any question that you would like to ask? <laughs> Okay, or probably because it's time. And so I think that it's time for the host, Dr. Thun Nguyen, to resume our webinars and also to conclude the webinars for a very successful and interesting presentation from our future speaker, Mr. Lin. Thank you. Okay, it's already 11.30 now, and it seems that all participants are still so eager 
to continue. But I'm sorry that I have to conclude now. Thank you so much, Mr. Lin, for your awesome presentation and your amazing photos of the English classes all around the world. We are grateful for the sharing of effective methods to teach pronunciation. And participants, we also thank you for your engagement throughout the webinar. We do hope that you will have some valuable knowledge and experience as takeaways following our fellows' demonstration of interactive strategies. And hope this will help enhance your students' pronunciation skills. For further questions and concerns, please get contacted directly with our fellows through the email or Facebook. Before you leave, please kindly spend just one minute to share with you and inform you of it is so upcoming uh, event. Do you want me to stop sharing? Are you going to share something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Can you see my share? Can you see my share screen now? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. We look forward to seeing you again at uh, that is the webinar number 20 on 12th of March with speaker John Niflit uh, about the title Getting More from the 96 to 12 Part 1 Reading Strategies. And again, please uh, finish in the check attendance, the second link. So that you can see you the certificate of participation after the webinar. Again, thank you for the attendance today. Wish you a happy Sunday and goodbye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Happy Sundays. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bây giờ còn có người vào admit. Bây giờ mình là uh, xin kết thúc uh, buổi ghi hình hôm nay nhé và event này xin chào mọi người ạ. À. Chào chị Hồng Vân ạ. À. Vâng.